Welcome to the Heart and Soul Wellness Podcast, where we inspire women by teaching applicable skills and tools and assisting them with connecting with one another, healing, and aspiring to their highest selves so they can reach their full potential. Hi, thank you for joining us. Uh, It's great to have you guys back today. We're going to be talking about healing from PTSD today. And I'm really excited to shed some light on this topic. Um, I primarily see women healing from some type of traumatic or stressful event in their life. Uh, I also work with children as well. And so this is um, something that I'm very passionate about, uh, getting some information out there to women so that they have some skills and tools to help them with moving forward in their life. So the the first thing I'm going to do is share a quote. Okay, so you are not responsible for being down, but you are responsible for getting back up. This is by Jesse Jackson. So um, when it comes to healing from PTSD, the first thing I want you to know is there is hope. There is healing that's possible. It is a terrible and difficult thing to experience however um, PTSD ultimately is your brain trying to resolve something that something that was traumatic that happened so PTSD stands for post-traumatic stress disorder a set of emotional problems that can occur after someone has experienced a terrible stressful life event okay and there is some um, debate about A lot of times people find themselves in debates over, well, what's true PTSD? And if I have some of the symptoms, do I really have PTSD? So I'll talk with you a little bit about that. But PTSD does not just happen to war veterans. It does not just happen. It it happens to sexual assault survivors. It happens to people when they go through a divorce. Uh, It can happen to people who are um, going through a major life event. Um, It can happen to people who are in a car accident. It can also happen to people who are um, um, experiencing relationship trauma, healing from relationship trauma, and even betrayal trauma. A partner who's cheated on you or has betrayed you in some way, you can still have PTSD symptoms. This is something that a lot of people don't know or understand, and I just think that we need more education around PTSD, what it is, and how it shows up. So um, the first thing I want you to know, or the second thing, I want you to know is that it is a normal reaction that your brain has when it's trying to resolve something that is very traumatic okay and so I'm going to tell you a little bit about something that I think is very helpful and this is polyvagal theory I'm going to show you this so you can see that for those of you who are uh, listening on audio you can see this I'll put a copy of this in our show notes This is the window of tolerance. It's polyvagal theory, and it really informs us on the states of mind that we can go into. Whether we're healing from PTSD or whether we're having stress reactions so that we can see where we are at, okay? So we have a state of hyper arousal. This is when your sympathetic nervous system is activated. It's an acceleration of the autonomic nervous system response. So you're gonna have increased heart rate. You're gonna have blood pressure high blood pressure, blood flow to large muscles. So basically your heightened sensations. This is how you know that you're in a state of hyper arousal. This is when your fight, flight, or freeze response is activated, okay? And so again, like it's a state of hypervigilance. Um, disorganized cognitive process. You might have really disorganized thoughts. You may have difficulty with staying focused and feeling grounded. You may feel just on edge um, and this can show up mild moderate or severe so everyone's going to respond to this differently um, thinking is going to be rigid or chaotic poor judgment racing thoughts obsessive thoughts behaviors intrusive emotions images re- emotional reactivity and even dread okay so this is where no new learning can take place when we are in our state of hyper arousal when we are in the middle stage which is our optimal zone of arousal This is a window of tolerance, meaning that when we are experiencing stressors, we are actually able to adapt, um, move forward, and we're able to uh, take a new learning. Okay, so ultimately what this means is 
deceleration of autonomic nervous system response, body regulated, a state where emotions are tolerated and information normalized. So what this means is that you may have a stressful experience, but you're able to get into your wise mind, you're able to tolerate what's happening, and you're able to move through that experience, okay? Uh, doesn't mean that you're not gonna feel anything because feeling something is positive because we know that when we are feeling our emotions, we are moving forward. So it's not that we're not feeling anything, but that the emotions are basically tolerated, okay? Okay. So full activation of your prefrontal cortex. This means your prefrontal cortex is your uh, executive functioning center that you're able to um, think somewhat clearly, okay? So um, you may still be overwhelmed, but you're still in a place where you're able to rationally think through possibly solutions, um, where you may have some ideas and some things that you're considering or thinking. Um, so you're gonna be alert, um, coherent, and you are able to come back to a stage of relaxation even if you are moving out of this stage. So this stage is gonna be, you are able to come back to a relaxed state. Um, Self-soothing, emotional regulation uh, system is activated, and then um, a sense of control of awareness and options. Still feeling emotions, a full range of emotions, joy, sadness, possibly even grief, but you're able to come back to a state of managing those emotions. Okay, your state of hyper arousal. This is a shutdown, basically. This is when you've shut down and um, you've gone to a state of oftentimes not feeling depression. Okay, so extreme deceleration of autonomic nervous system response absence of sensations. This is your freeze response, slowed or disabled thinking process, disassociation of awareness, isolation, withdrawal, depression, numbness, hopelessness, shutdown response, disabled defensive responses. Okay, so depression, you're feeling numb, you're feeling hopeless, everything's shut down and you're not feeling anything. I have clients sometimes come to me and say, I have been feeling this way for months. I would love to feel something. And my response to that is that your body is responding in the way that it knows how to survive and how to get through this experience or this time. And so when, our, when we are going to a shutdown response or a hypervigilant response, there's no judgment because our mind knows what to do to resolve the trauma. And so we have some skills and tools to help us with managing that so that we ultimately can work through it but it is the natural process that your mind is going to go through and your body is gonna go through to resolve something that, that was significantly stressful and traumatic in your life. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the symptoms that go along with PTSD. So one is there's going to be possibly nightmares. Um, again, so when we're sleeping, um, our subconscious is active and a lot of times we'll have nightmares because the subconscious is working really hard to resolve something from the past. And so it may show up as nightmares. The other thing is um, a re-experiencing of a traumatic event. So you may have an event come to your mind that you experienced in the past and then um, your mind is trying to resolve what happened. So you may have an image or you may have a smell or a trigger of something that reminded you of something that happened in the past and all of a sudden it feels like you're back there. It's like you've been put into a time machine and you're back right in that situation that you were at before. That's another symptom of PTSD, is a re-experiencing of trauma. Um, the other one is avoidance, meaning Isolation or avoiding people, places, activities you used to enjoy but are a result of working to protect yourself from the trauma reoccurring. So that's very common, um, this idea of avoiding events, people, places, anything that may remind us of the trauma. And again, the brain is doing its job of working really hard to protect us and making sure that we don't put ourselves in a situation where we're going to re-experience that trauma. Um, arousal. So arousal is, of course, what we just talked about. 
is when we go either to hypervigilance or shutdown. Both are PTSD symptoms. Um, so there's two types. There's simple PTSD and there's complex PTSD. Complex PTSD is very common um, when it comes to childhood trauma. So when there were multiple traumatic events that happened through your throughout your life, it would then be complex PTSD. Um, so you may there's there's a couple ways this shows up. Okay, so one is. Our brain is so just intelligent that we sometimes shut down um, memories and experiences that we have had and said, oh, that's not really bothering me anymore. However, five years later, you experience another event that's similar to what you experienced in the past, and all of a sudden, everything comes flooding. Everything from the past is triggered by what's happening in the present. So that's one thing that, that can happen. Um, so it is this idea of um, a complex several situations or several experiences more than one make it a complex PTSD uh, make it complex PTSD simple PTSD is something like I was in a car accident and I'm having these PTSD symptoms and that needs to be resolved that's a single incident complex trauma is multiple um, that can look like um, childhood trauma sexual assault, um, anything that you've experienced, and they could be a variety of different experiences, and it still could be considered, and it still is considered complex PTSD. So what that means is just that there's more layers to resolve. Okay, so when we think about the way that we store memories in our brain, it's through thoughts, images, body sensations, um, emotions, and again, like sights or sounds, those are all part of our memory network. So when we've stored multiple um, traumatic memories, um, sometimes these can be, with EMDR, we can resolve these um, together. Okay, so when we have lots of associations with the same memory, sometimes when I'm doing EMDR with a client, they get resolved all at once. And with single incidents, those, um, are do not are not quite in, as intense and seem to take are a lot faster to resolve. However, um, with that being said, um, I had a situation just even about a year ago with someone who had extremely complex PTSD. She came in to see me. We worked for maybe three months, and she came in and she was like. I do, I am blown away by my progress. This is absolutely incredible. So EMDR is, the what it stands for is eye movement desensitization reprocessing. And what it does is we're going into that memory network like I just told you about, and we're reprocessing all of those components of memory. Why do we need to do this? Well, because when you experience something traumatic, that went to your amygdala, the part of the brain, your emotion center of the brain, okay? And it's continuing to trigger that same memory because your brain is working to resolve it. EMDR is rapid eye movements and along with us identifying um, a negative belief that we want to then change, um, create a new positive belief. So basically what we're doing is we're identifying the core belief that was established at the time of the trauma and then we're using EMDR to reprocess all those components of memory and then instill a positive belief. So it allows your brain to have a, you to have a new experience basically um, and to create a new positive belief. So um, when you're feeling really stuck with something and it feels like cognitive behavioral therapy or talk therapy isn't working. EMDR is extremely effective with resolving PTSD, and it's also very effective in resolving, helping with depression, anxiety, eating disorders. There's so many things that it's used for. Addiction, all kinds of things now, because when we started using EMDR back in the 1970s, we started using it with war vets, and the research shows shows and showed then that even when someone stopped, completed their treatment, 
PTSD symptoms continue to improve, their functioning improved, all of the PTSD symptoms. So for example, avoidance, um, obsessive thoughts, um, intrusive thoughts, re-experiencing trauma, triggers, all of these things continue to resolve over time. And I've, I've witnessed that as well. I've had the honor of working with war vets. And when we, when we start doing EMDR, it can be a little, um, intimidating sometimes for some people in the very beginning, but I've had people just be completely amazed by the progress they've been able to make in terms of nightmares and PTSD symptoms. Highly effective and it works well um, with a lot of different situations. So even if you're not experiencing PTSD, I have some clients that want to try it with depression or binge eating, eating disorders, and it's truly incredible the work the progress that i see when clients engage in it and it's what i primarily do because it's um well at least one of the modalities i guess there are a, a, several other that i do but i use those in conjunction with emdr emdr is just the most helpful with helping clients to move forward so um okay the first thing, the other thing I want you to know is your symptoms are normal because of what you've been through. It does not mean that you are broken because you are having these symptoms. It doesn't mean that there is anything wrong with you at all. Your brain is obviously trying to resolve something traumatic that's happened to you. And so having hope through the process is really important. Hope is something that we can hold on to and gravitate towards even when you're experiencing something so horrific that you don't know how you're going to get through it. Um, I'm going to teach you some things that you can do through that process. So those are the symptoms of PTSD. So let's go to, I'm going to go to some grounding skills and some things that you can do when you are feeling, when you are experiencing PTSD. Okay. So, um, when you are having a trigger, one of the things that you want to do is bring yourself back to the present moment. So we like to use grounding skills. So I'm going to teach you a couple of them. One is if you're finding yourself in a situation where you are re-experiencing a past memory, what you can do is um, bringing yourself back to the present moment. So you can say to yourself, I'm in the present. I'm not in the past, and you can even say, I'm in my room, this is the date, and it has a way of getting our prefrontal cortex on board and bringing us back to a place of presence. It's one thing you can do. The other thing that a lot of my clients like to do is, as simple as it sounds, is filling their pulse. So I have them just put their um, finger on their pulse, and they'll take one minute and just get grounded back into the present moment. Even just by feeling your pulse, it kind of brings you back into your body and just gives you like that sense of, okay, I can feel my pulse, I'm here, I'm safe. So again, bring yourself back to the present, bring yourself back to where you're at in the current moment. Um, two thoughts uh, that I wanna share. One is, um, Meditation and mindfulness are not always helpful to use when you're in the moment of distress. You want to get your left and right brain working together and you want to get your brain integrated. And so what one of the tools and skills that you can use that's very effective is one, like going for a walk. Why? Because you're using the left and right side of your body, both of them together, and it helps to bring things back to, together, back to the present moment. Some kind of movement will help you get back into your body, but it will also help you with um, feeling more grounded. So listening in to your body and listening in to what's helpful for you in the moment is, is really important. And these things that I'm offering as suggestions, it's really up to you to decide the one that's going to work best for you. And there may even be some other ones that are even more effective for you. Everyone is different. PTSD is different with every person. And so thinking about what works best for you. The other thing is that um, meditation and mindfulness over time can be very helpful with working through um, P 
PTSD when it's used at the right time. So I don't recommend doing it when you're in a state of hyperarousal necessarily, especially if you're in the very beginning of your healing process. However, if you start your day with a mantra and you take five minutes of meditation and mindfulness, so just taking five minutes to notice your breath, maybe notice the sensations that you're feeling, um, bringing yourself back to the present moment does have significant effects because it imprints the brain and um, it gives you really almost like a pathway back to um, your window of tolerance. So it does allow you to come back to a place of calm. But it does take practice. It does take this practice of noticing, okay, and being really mindful with your self-care and noticing the things that are triggering PTSD and having some supports in place. So for example, having like a friend to call, having um, soothing with all five of your senses. So taking a bath, listening to music, something to smell, something to listen to and something to see. So, you know, maybe there's like, uh, I have like a vision board in my room. And so like, I look at that if I'm having a stressful day, but soothing with all five senses will bring you back to, um, can bring you back to your, to your state of calm and your window of tolerance. It's another thing that you can do. Um, and then one of the most important things I would say is just remembering that you can survive each moment as it comes. So instead of taking it all together and instead of going to, why is this happening to me? I can't believe this is happening. Coming back to a place of, okay, what do I need? Who can I call? What are my supports? And one of the most healing, uh, research has shown one of the most um, influential things that we can do in a moment like this or when we're experiencing intense PTSD is to go ahead and utilize um, your support system. So working through avoidance is very, very important. Um, so being able to come back to a support system and having some helpful supports is really important through the process. Okay, so as we're talking about healing from PTSD, the first um, coping skill, self-care skill, the most important one is to be compassionate with yourself. As you're healing, it's going to be rocky, but you will notice gains and you will improve over time. And so what I want you to remember as you're healing from PTSD is that every step forward matters. And what we find is that it's a cumulative effect of the skills and tools that we're using. So drinking water, taking good care of your body, physically, emotionally, and spiritually are going to have huge effects, huge positive effects, especially over time, throughout your day, you're gonna notice that you're feeling less triggered. It's going to have an accumulative effect that's going to pay off. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that when you are having a reaction or you're feeling triggered, try to be very kind about that reaction. Um, as much as you can, try to stay out of judgment as in terms of like why, when you find yourself going to why is this happening or I don't understand this, try to just bring in some compassion, gentleness, and loving kindness. The second thing you wanna do is make sure that you have, that you're eating regularly and that you're getting plenty of water and you're taking really good care of yourself. The reason why is we wanna keep our brain from going to fight, flight, or freeze mode. We don't want the um, limbic system to think that it's in a place of uh, survival or threat anymore. Because as you're healing, we're working on getting you into the prefrontal cortex where you're starting to make sense of what's happened and you're starting to move forward. When the limbic system feels threatened, this is when um, this is when we're gonna be more triggered, uh, stress level is gonna be higher, and so we wanna work on um, managing that so that throughout the day, you're feeling like you're being taken care of and you're out of the fight, flight, or freeze response as much as we can be, right? Like we're living, 
we live in a world where stress is just part of our daily life, but you want to bring some of these nurturing skills into your practice so that um, so that you're able to come back to, okay, like how do I, what do I need to do? How can I take care of myself better today, right? So nutrition is huge in healing and recovery. Um, there's a lot of research that shows that when you're taking uh, enough protein and getting enough amino acids, it has a very positive effect in the brain in terms of healing, in terms of managing depression and anxiety. So I highly recommend making sure that you're getting protein three times a day. As much as you can, make sure you're getting protein. That, that's gonna give your brain the amino acids that it needs to assist with the production of serotonin and dopamine. Um, and then the third thing that I would say is that when you are having difficult moments, think about creating meaning in those moments, okay? So when you're having a PTSD reaction, you're not gonna think, oh, I'm gonna create meaning right now. However, as you're moving through that moment, thinking about, okay, like, um, I can't wait to see the goodness that's gonna come out of this, or I can't wait to see what it's going to be like as I move through this process, right? And because I know that when I get to the other side that I'm going to have more insight and knowledge. And then keeping more of those, keeping like a dialogue or keeping like a journal of when you move through each one of your triggers will be helpful because you can look back and reflect and say like, wow, like look at what my trigger was two weeks ago and look at where I'm at now. You'll be able to see the progress and the growth. So... Make sure you're eating, make sure you're drinking, make sure you're engaging in activities that are going to help with um, creating more safety for your amygdala, for your limbic system. Um, yoga is an awesome way to do that and getting some movement in is, is just critical. Um, and you're going to see the progression over time. And so be very patient with yourself, be very kind, be very patient, and be very loving with yourself. It was really awesome to be with you guys today. I'm looking forward to connecting in with you next week. Hope you have a fantastic week. Thank you for listening to the Heart and Soul Wellness Podcast with your host, Sarah Carter. Make sure to like and subscribe, and if you have any thoughts about what we talked about today, leave a comment. Also, you can find us at heartandsoulwellness.org and on Facebook and Instagram. Join us again as we continue to help women heal, connect, and aspire to their true and authentic selves.